Hello and welcome to episode 23 of Shared Discovery, the show and podcast dedicated to sharing all the many exciting and enjoyable aspects of gaming and gaming. I'm your host, Victor. Today, I'm joined by a new co-host, Brad. Hey, how's it going, guys? How are you doing? I'm doing pretty dang well. It's a little warm in here, but it is what it is. So. We're going to sweat. We're going to have a good conversation. We're going to sweat like true gamers. Hey, hey, I know that. <laughs> I've had a lot of sweat in my days. So, so you're a new co-host here. And with new co-hosts, I ask them the same questions because I want the audience to know you, okay. right? Yeah. So I'm going to ask you, what? how long have you been playing games? What are your favorite games? How do we know each other? Yeah, so I've been playing games probably as long as I can remember. I don't want to say my whole life because there's a point where I couldn't hold a controller, sure. I couldn't press keys yep. or anything like that. But basically, from the moment I saw my mom playing pipes on that old oh, yeah. DC, or I mean, on that old dial-up computer. So <laughs> four years, started at pipes, moved over okay. to Frogger, and yep. ever since then. Dude, basically. that's classic. I remember that Game too. Pipes. I do remember that. Because on it, it's weird. We share a mom. That's weird, isn't so, it? It's so strange. Yeah, I know. We don't really look like it. But. We don't look like it. <laughs> For you podcast listeners, you might want to come check it out so you can confirm that we don't look like it. We absolutely don't. So it's good to get you on here. What are some of your favorite games these days? Yeah, so favorite games these days, uh, unfortunately, I, I've actually been a little bit busy with work, so I've had to take a step back. But at the time, it was classic WoW. I was putting so many hours into the time that I found the, the most enjoyment with gaming. Sure. Back when we were able to spend just endless hours, hours 12, hours 16 hours. hours, falling asleep at the keyboard. Literally. Just doing that. <laughs> but unfortunately, I've had to take a step back. Okay. So I'm trying to like work my way back to mm. being able to know life. But it, sure. unfortunately, we have a life. You get games so. as you can, right? Exactly. Right? So you're a core gamer. Yeah, I remember. Get uh, as you can. Yeah, I remember uh, when we were growing up, we'd see these adults that were always gaming and we're like, I want that life. I want to do that. I want to figure out how I can set enough time to be able to give my time to what I care about, mm -hmm. which is gaming, yeah. and then I'll figure out the family we'll piece. Figure, we'll figure it out after. Yeah. Why do you think I make this show? <laughs> it's an excuse to talk sure about and play games, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, WoW, as, as the listeners know at this point, that we love WoW around yeah. here. I've used reference that a lot, and we're going to reference that a lot today because yeah. we have a topic that is really pertinent to it. Yeah. All right. So the topic we have, it actually comes, again, for Mark Rosewater, the lead okay. designer of Magic. I've talked about him a few times, but he has an article from 2013 called Live Like a Gamer. Okay. And so we're going to talk about his article and give our input. And in this article, he talks about s skills we learn in games and how we can apply those to real life. There's a lot of overlap there. There's a lot of overlap yeah. there. And we're going to go through each point talk about what he says, then we're gonna give some game examples but, and real life examples about how we've used the skill before. Okay, I'm yeah. sure we've got a lot of those. Okay, yeah. but I got a question for you okay. before we get started. You've heard this term a lot, but I'm gonna just, I'm gonna throw it out there. Okay. What aspect of life do you think you've min-maxed the most? Oh, okay. Min-maxing. So I've tried to be, coming from where we're at, uh, mm -hmm. northern Michigan, there's not the most diversity. So sure. I've always tried to seek that out wherever I sure. can. And the aspect that I think I've min-maxed the most is probably my perspective. Interesting. Whenever I come into a certain situation, mm. I know that everybody's been somewhere different than I have. So sure. I try to see where that is. And my perspective at this point, the more that you do that, the more that you look for the things that aren't obvious, the more you see it. Mm. And I think that... I'm, I'm able to see what really changes between one situation to another mm. and it doesn't happen overnight I've been doing this for like 10 years and I yeah. still like get shocked every single day right but the perspective helps on that and you've been you've lived all over the country too so you've seen a lot of different cultures I'm a lot of different here from a different state you're coming here from a different state it took you so long to get you in the studio <laughs> which I'm glad we finally did but I like that I like that answer a lot and that's really gonna tie into some of the criteria some of the strategies Marx talks about later so hold on to that I'll, I'm gonna bring that go back up <laughs> uh, for me I think probably time management okay just saying like okay I have this many things I need to do in this amount of time how to most efficiently how can I most efficiently do this so I can do what I want yeah so I can play games yeah <laughs> so exactly. I can do what I want so you can get back <laughs> to what you actually want to do mm -hmm. so why are we talking about min max wait wait, wait hold on we got to define it we got to define it all right we didn't even define the term so yeah. let's, i'll let you read read them the definition of min maxing 
Alrighty, so min-maxing in a video game or role-playing game is to optimize a character by assigning all or nearly all skill points to an, uh, the ability essential to that character's success in a, speci a specified role and environment, and no points to other skills rather than distributing that skill points more evenly across other attributes. Okay. That's, a lot of, that's a pretty big mouthful, but let's send it over to Vic. To yeah, so the core concept of this is taking a thing that you need to do and taking whatever resources you have to do that the best way possible. Okay. And ignoring the unnecessary bits. Yeah. Right, so thinking about time management, the example that I gave, right? Okay. And so I have to clean this much stuff in two hours. I'm gonna ignore the rest I don't have to clean yeah. and I'm going to try to clean the things in the most efficient way possible. I'm gonna use one rag, I'm going to use the proper tools. Right? You're not going to vacuum until you've wiped vacuum. off the, ca the cupboards. You're going to have to vacuum twice. Then I'd have to vacuum it. twice. Yeah, right? that makes sense. So when we talk about min-maxing in real life, it's a game concept that is all about, like in games, there are certain things that require, so this is when people are like, I'm going to push my character to the absolute limit in this regard. Yeah. And you have to do this in WoW a lot. Yeah. Right. To beat certain bosses, you're like, I need maximum fire resistance now. That's kind of an interesting <laughs> thing, because in order to min-max, you can't max everything. You can't. There's a specific piece there where you have to go minimum on the other side of things Absolutely. that aren't important. So you can't do every single thing to mm. the maximum, and you have to decide what you actually want to min-max. Absolutely. Kind of and honestly, yeah. that's a really good segue, because that is going to tie into a lot of the points that we talk about today. Sure. Okay. So the first point, let's just jump in, right? So we got yeah. 10 of these. We got 10 points here, and I want to just jump right in and say, the first one Mark outlines is, there is a solution. Okay. To everything, there's a solution. So what he says is that, as gamers, we go into a game, we see a problem, and our attitude is, how am I going to accomplish this yeah. goal? But on the other side, often people in real life do this thing where they go, can I accomplish this goal? And the difference there is this mindset of, as gamers, we know there's a solution. And yeah. oftentimes in real life we ask, is it even possible? Yeah, because they wouldn't make a game without a solution. They wouldn't make a game without a solution. Unless it was like a sandbox. But most of the games that we're playing when we're asking for a solution, that's the intent of the game. And, you, and think about even that sandbox example. Think about Minecraft. Like the overarching yeah. goal is to survive, and there's a way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> right? There's definitely a way there's to a not way survive. To sur there's definitely <laughs> a way not to survive. So Mark says, like gamers, in real life, we need to start treating every problem like there is a solution. Okay. Attack every problem that way. So I'm going to throw it to you. So we're going to give the game example and the real example. So. What comes to mind for games for you? What are some examples that pop into mind when you're like, right, there's a solution? So first off, as, as we already mentioned, WoW is a really big mm. piece of our uh, growing up. So throughout the history of growing up in WoW and the games that we've played, well, we started off in like, you know, the Nintendo era where stuff wasn't really fleshed out. Mm -hmm. There's so many glitches that if you hit the corner wrong, you're going to end up behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So the first time I ever did that, I was playing with my buddy Chandler. Pretty sure he's been on here before. Chandler's been here before. Yeah. Absolutely. So I was playing with my buddy Chandler, and it was some racing game. You could play as like a hot dog or some crazy okay. thing once you end up we'll have, to we'll have to ask him what game that is. Yeah, well, next time he's on here, ask yeah. him what it is, and he'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But there's this one jump where you can just... You go off of it, and for some reason, if you hit the right angle, you just you br basically break the game, and you're able to just go super fast, doing everything, okay. and you're outside of the like what's supposed to be possible. Yeah, and that's where I first realized that what's supposed to be possible, there might be something more that's not right, supposed to be I possible. See. And that's where I was able to figure out that, hey, I can hit this jump and I can get below Orgrimmar. Mm. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that? Glitches. Yeah. Oh, glitch glitches. hunters. Exactly. Yeah. I, I'm not really a glitch hunter anymore because they're pretty good with that yeah. these days. Mm -hmm. But there's always another solution for anything. Wow. Farming. Mm. Um, oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Any of that yeah. Kind of stuff, like so. how? Like there's always a different, better, different way to make money. There's always a way. Yeah, exactly. There's always a way to make money. Yeah. I was actually <laughs> talking with my girlfriend a, a little while ago. Her name's Claire. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we we talk about that all the time. There's so many different ways to make money. The collect the collectible market is huge. Mm. So there's always another solution if you're not liking what you're doing. 
you can always find it somewhere else. Yeah. See, that's a good that's a good segue into the real life examples, yeah. right? So you, there's like in life, I need money. Mm -hmm. I know there's a way to make it. Yeah. Right. Let me look for that way. Exactly. So you, as a gamer, you're like, oh, I, I don't know. I guess I'm just not gonna make have enough money to live. You're like, no. I there's a way. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it yeah. to meet the goals that I have. And the fun thing about that is gamers. There's so look at look at all the different types mm -hmm. of games we have here. So. As gamers, you don't have to be stuck in the game that you're playing. If you're just not good at that game, well, find a different game that you're yep. good at. Or one that you actually enjoy, the type of strategy game that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. what, are you, what if you're a shooter? I'm not a shooter guy. That's, that's certainly not <laughs> sure. something that I like. So I'm just not even going to try to play and sure. win those games. It's just not going to happen. So that is, a, that is a solution, just mm -hmm. not playing that game. Yeah, exactly. It's stopping. That is a solution. And that, you know that's there. And so as game we're recalibrating right so for me i think of for games i think of puzzles yeah or you go in you know the designer gave you a solution to this like okay caveat here we're not saying these are easy yeah <laughs> and a lot of games are purposely challenging right but just because it's not easy doesn't mean there's not a solution and it can't be done so i think of puzzles and then in real life like I think of like editing, I edit videos. Okay. I think of yeah. that as like also a puzzle. Like, like I see you, a YouTuber do a technique and I'm like, yeah. okay, how do I do that? It's obviously possible, yeah. how do I do it? <laughs> yeah, if it's not with this specific technique, what if they used a different line tool? Mm -hmm. What if they just did some crazy shading that I haven't thought of? Exactly. Like, there's so many different ways to produce something that looks cool, you just gotta figure out what works Absolutely. for you. Absolutely, and that right there, different that leads us into our next category here, our next point so go ahead tell them what our next section is oh wow that's a very natural transition so our next point is try something else mm. so uh, i don't know how much you want me to go into this because there's so much you can do mm -hmm. outside of what we're currently doing sure a lot of people just end up in the certain path of playing this game where i'm going to keep grinding this one mm. skill where if they were to grind a different attribute like the defense instead sure. of attack well they would survive longer in order to be able to actually kill that guy yeah. there's a little bit of balancing that needs to happen and if you're not trying something else you'll never really find what that balance is i like that point a lot too because i think about wow right i i you have to think out of the box and not get stuck because mm -hmm. i think about i play a warrior i'm like obviously strength's the best stat i yeah. do more damage then i go to something like a hunter and druid i'm like obviously strength's the best stat that's not the case <laughs> yeah you right? have to try something i gotta try agility because that's hit him with the your main gun? stat <laughs> right you have to try something else and back to puzzles you know like okay i tried to get it in there it didn't fit Okay, maybe I should use the skill the game gave me earlier. Yeah. In the game. Maybe I should try a different strat, a strat, different combination of ability. Maybe I should ask for help. That's a good point. You said something there about uh, trying something you got earlier in the game. Mm. Most games are designed to take you from one step to the next step, mm -hmm. and often if we do the do the same thing from level one to level twenty, what we try and what works at level one, it's not going to work at level twenty because we got abilities at level five, eight. 12 that are essential to get mm. to, to, to that level 21. Yeah, so. and you saying 1 to 20 makes me think of D&D. &D. Yeah. Oh, okay. Early in the yeah. game, you might spam cantrips. Yeah. That's not going to work at the end. That yeah. might not work. you got to use your higher level spells. Yeah, right? talking about D&D, &D, just a little side thing. We have an amazing DM for our campaign. Mm. He made little potions here. I love that. 2D4, you can just shake it. Got it's literally back. for the podcast listeners it's like a glass vial it has red resin and then two little d4s you can shake to roll it, i love that it's a great cool. dm and so for mark mark says here the gamer mindset is that is not over until it's over mm -hmm. it's that perseverance right right if the game hasn't ended there's still time to try something out so if you're alive you're alive right now, yeah. there's still time to try something else. Oh, my favorite things. I know we keep bringing it back to WoW, but one of my favorite things is when you're relying on that one last person. Mm -hmm. You got them down to 1% and that boss oh, is just yeah. chasing them. And you're like, you, everybody's cheering <laughs> behind the scenes. And you're hoping that he gets that one auto attack crit and uh, he does. Dude, uh, so this is funny. Uh, it's either they're cheering loudly or they know the person needs maximum focus so it so gets quiet. it gets quieter than it ever has been so in, in the group chat <laughs> and they pull it off and you're like yeah everybody goes crazy yeah. oh yeah there's a solution even to the end it's not over till it's over yeah. 
And a motto, bringing it back to Magic of the Gathering, is like winning with one life or winning with 20 life is the same thing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. You still always have time to keep trying something else. <laughs> what do you think are some real life examples of this? Well, you said that uh, it doesn't really matter if you win with one life or 20 life. If you win with one arm, two arms, no arms. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Still won, right? Still won. <laughs> and uh, I'm currently getting into the business world with sure. like uh, marketing and agencies and that type of stuff. And one of the things with that is whenever we're meeting with a client, we want to be able to give them everything that we can mm. so that they know that we're going to give them our 100%. Mm. Oftentimes, well, they're going to go look for somebody else. And the thing that we have to tell ourselves is, if we give a, an extra 30 seconds, another extra two minutes to under, understand what this person's real problem is, well, we're, we might be able to actually get them as a client mm -hmm. because they understand us and sure. how much we care. And I, I say all that to bring it back to the, the phrase, zeros don't average. If you have something that's worth value to you, you have to keep diving into that mm. uh, in order to get to the finish line. Sure. Determination is what really matters yeah. in games because you're not going to be, be able to beat that boss at level one. Just like you might not be able to understand the value you can bring to somebody else sure. until you've been in that situation over and over again. Yeah. And you can actually give that person what matters to them. I like that. Really just like persevering in the conversations to learn about them so you yeah. can help them properly. And we've learned that because we've played some hard games in our day. Games used to be pretty dang hard. They really did. They had to... Nowadays, they can always push out another add-on or mm -hmm. expansion, but back in the day, they had to have a fully fleshed there out it is. game. That's the game. They had to make enough time mm -hmm. of struggling to build the next game. Absolutely. But because games were so hard, sometimes you just lose. <laughs> yeah. And it's just going to happen. And yeah. failure can be disheartening, but that leads us right into our next point, right? That losing is an opportunity to learn. Ooh, okay. Right? So what this says is, no matter how good you are at a game, you're gonna lose. That's uh, that's definitely the point it's, of it's playing. Gonna lose. I feel you're, like. you're gonna lose. If you're perfect at a game, won't you get bored? Right? Yeah. So you're gonna lose at some point. But gamers, if we don't get frustrated and give up, we see this as a chance to learn what we're doing wrong. So why did I lose the game? What actions did I take that led me to losing? And yeah. what could I have done differently that might have kept me from losing? Yeah. So we Sometimes things are out of our control, but if we take this mindset and say, if we believe that each loss is the result of something outside of our control, we'll never have the opportunity to improve. So we need yeah. to look at and what actions that we took and can change to improve that situation, to do better next time. Yeah. We need to figure out what led to the outcome and don't make those same mistakes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, there's so much to that. If you can actually, like, know where you made the mistake you can start to plan how to not make that mistake mm. but it really starts by understanding hey i shouldn't be 30 yards away from this mob he's gonna come kill me because he's a higher level for me mm -hmm. than me he's or aggro real like since i'm much lower level he has a higher aggro radius i need to stay far away exactly that's a good one right there the mm -hmm. aggro radius you don't really learn about that no, until you, you learn, learn that by dying way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Remember the first time you saw a skull character? Oh, wow. man. You're like, what is that? Oh, that's guy? cool. I'm like, going to go see what that is. Yeah. It just one shots you. Just one shots. <laughs> it's probably only level 10, but for us. But we're like two. Because <laughs> the way we used to play WoW is like we wouldn't level for a while. We just wanted to see the world. Yeah. And we would try to like sneak around. It was, we thought WoW was a stealth game. We, yeah. <laughs> it is. It's not. Yeah, rose, but, but. Yeah. And so for me, there are a lot of great game examples. What I like about these points that Mark has is they all lap right back mm -hmm. into each other because you can't learn it unless you try something else, mm -hmm. right? So learn, we lose, we try something else. And I think, hmm. like, Gotcha Force. We talk about that a lot here, but that game gets really hard. It does. <laughs> like, for a kid's game, game that's a a aimed at, like, 10 to 13-year-olds, I'm like, my lord. Yeah. How did we beat that as children? Dude, there was that Superman game back in the day. Yeah, oh, there's a goodness. really it's crappy possible. Superman it GameCube game that is just so hard because it's <laughs> the mechanics are bad, but we persevered. We got through it. <laughs> I tried something. To, I had a whole training arc to be able to hit the button faster. Mm -hmm. It's great. 
<laughs> Dude, I remember. <laughs> like, I flex my arm right over the button because I have shaky arms. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't even pressing, it no, was vibrating. It was just vibrating the button. <laughs> and I, we had to learn that skill. Yeah. We, had to, we did take some breaks, but we came back and we kept trying. Because that I don't know why that game was bad. It was, but we persevered. Because it was a challenge. We're gamers. Mm -hmm. We know that there's a solution yeah. past this. They wouldn't make this game, and have these other abilities. I know that I can use mm -hmm. soon, behind this this terrible dam level. And it's funny I say dam, but it was literally it was literally to a dam. fix a dam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're literally you're spamming the button so Superman can close the hole in the dam. Yeah. So that's hilarious. <laughs> I love that. Uh, and what. We talked about some game examples, but you actually mentioned a real life example for this. Like you said, sometimes you might lose a client, right? Yeah. And you have, probably have, but you learn to try to th different things. You yeah. learn to spend that extra 30 seconds to talk yeah. to them. Yeah, every time that you meet somebody, well, every word that they say is something different than you haven't heard before. So you can learn from that opportunity. Mm. So one, of the, one of the best things that I ever learned was from a customer when I was mm. I had the sale and it was so, he knew that I was fresh into to making okay. um, sales or deals or whatever you want to call it. And he, I asked him, I was, I was like, hey, uh, please be sure that you pay that final amount. And he's like, you should never tell somebody to pay the final amount. They know we got to pay the final amount. And I was like, oh man, there's something, I got a lot to learn. I got, got a lot, lot to learn. learn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and that could have lost you the sale, mm -hmm. but that guy's nice enough to teach you. Exactly. And I guarantee there's other things that, I'll be up at night after a situation like just not even business or mm -hmm. it's just personal where I wish I had said something different mm -hmm. just because I was like I, I kept my mouth shut yeah. or something like that so it's even in relationships going mm -hmm. into what we wish we would have said oh dude you know? how many times do we like okay okay what strategy can we use to get past <laughs> this fight in this game we just ruminate and I'm like okay I could use this gunner and use this use his strategy to hold them and like we just ruminate yeah. on it so it's like this self-reflection that we do in games naturally just yeah. to apply that to life right yeah. it's just it's kind of hard for that it, it's hard because with gaming when you die you get to restart the game typically within minutes and if it's not minutes mm -hmm. it's typically within hours yeah. but in the game of life, when you fail, you learn and you don't get to retry it for sometimes months, yeah. maybe years later. The consequences so. are much more severe, which is why I think Mark leads us into this next point, actually, that I will, I'll will throw out, off, out to you after we throw our sheets. Whoo! Oh, come on. Uh, oh, okay, uh, it went there off. We go. It, we almost, it. <laughs> it almost failed the throw. Ooh, okay. This is a tough one because how can you do this? Um, you're going to go into that, but mm -hmm. the next one that Mark talks about is identify what matters most. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'll tell you what, that's something that you have to reevaluate every single time you enter a, a specific area. But I'm going to hand, ha, hand it over to uh, Victor here to talk about kind of how he identifies what matters sure, most. Sure, sure. So we'll back up here because Mark has a few good points about this that kind of help us frame this a little. Okay. So he says that gamers know the key to solving our problems. If we know that the games are solvable, and to do that we have to identify what matters most, and the key to doing that is getting rid of the distractions. Hmm, okay. Right? Try to figure out what is holding you back, slowing you down, keeping you from reaching that goal. And so if you understand what the distractions are, and if you understand where to put your focus, Right? That's halfway to solving the problem. That makes sense, because in WoW, I've spent, oh, pro probably hundreds of hours doing professions I that I just delete. I like, know. I, I unlearned professions I've spent so much time and money to get because I thought it was important, mm -hmm. but I didn't really do an inventory. And I think WoW is a really good example of this, because WoW, I think about leveling. And wow, there are many different ways to level. And as expansions come out, there's different ways to level. Yeah. And think about when uh, Looking for Group came out, Dungeon mm -hmm. Finder came out. They wanted people to use that. So yeah. they made that the most optimal way to get it XP. They, yeah, you got so much more experience from just pressing a button just than the button. walking around doing the quests. Mm -hmm. uh, I think at the same time, they started giving you experience for professions. Mm -hmm. but it just didn't matter. The quickest way was just to simply go to looking for group. So the caveat here is identifying what matters most to you. 
Mm. Right. So if leveling the fastest possible way to get to the max level, you're going to do looking for group. You're yeah. going to avoid the distractions of quests. You're going to avoid the distractions of professions. You're going to just sit in <laughs> Orgrimmar yeah. and run these dungeons over and over. Yeah, and I th that's a good point because we were talking about um, the game Lost Ark versus mm. the Baldur's Gate game. Mm -hmm. They're both very similar games with uh, a lot of story built into it, but one, I'm going to pay attention to every last bit of that story because, well, I have a D&D &D campaign. Mm -hmm. Whereas Lost Ark, it's a really fun game, but what matters to me is getting to the end where I can actually just fight cool monsters. Mm. You know, So story mm -hmm. versus leveling in one game is way more important, but... To me, they're both different. So it's never going to be experience always. Yeah. It's never going to be story always. It's always going to be di different for whatever I'm feeling at that moment. It's nuanced. It's very nuanced. And so what some people find a distraction. Some people are like, quests, get them out of here. Yeah. Other people are like, dungeon finder, get them out of here. I want to see the world. Mm -hmm. I want to PvP. I want to experience these quests that in the story that the yeah. player, the game diviners have made. Right? That's a good point, too. Going mm -hmm. back into, this might be a good transition into real life stuff. Mm -hmm. The first, uh, do you remember when I first started playing WoW and I started on a role playing server? Yes, yeah, so that was hilarious. Well, I got kicked off that server. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't do it. I was a little kid. I had no idea how to yeah. role play. <laughs> oh, man. Probably got into some hijinks on that oh, server. Oh, yeah. They, they were talking at me in like Orcish, and I'm like, I'm just trying to get a guild ball. Sure to play the game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was, I do remember that because you got into a guild. They finally let you in. You're like, you just looted their guild ball. And they're like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> I was like, I thought this stuff was free. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I say that because the role-playing community, that doesn't matter to me. No. I'm not going to go to the, the server that's dedicated for that community. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to a different community. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. That's just, I just matter. thought that's kind of interesting. It's, it, there's a lot of overlap in the communities and the people that we choose to hang mm -hmm. out with as well. So. It's a very nuanced point. Right, yeah. and it's gonna be self-reflection for you. What's most important? Think about your role-playing server. Right? Some people they get to level one, they can role-play as much as they want. Yeah. They're like a peasant in the city, <laughs> and questing and leveling is a distraction. Yeah. Right. And then I think about r real life examples. For me, I think about exercise. Okay. I've done a lot of exercising and taken classes in my life, and a lot of exercise is for health. Yeah. Right. So identify the problems you have. Right. Like I have a neck issue mm -hmm. from injury I had, or I have like a you shoulder have that bicep tweet. If you could probably yeah, ripped see it, if you had bicep. Yeah. Probably. Like I don't know. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. You can kind of see how. I see it. Yeah. I had right this, there. so I had to identify that working out is important, but healing my muscle is more mm -hmm. important. So I changed the workout. Try something else. Yeah. Do different workouts to work this or like i have this neck injury i need to strengthen that area yeah. let me prioritize that which leads into our next point actually which is prioritize <laughs> prioritize <laughs> hold on hold on prioritize <laughs> <laughs> okay so these these three next three we kind of really overlap but it's kind of a process you identify okay. what matters most then you prioritize it, right? So the key to winning a game is to figure out the priority for the things you have to do. That's a good point, because um, mm -hmm. they identify what matters most. There's a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I've been thinking about how to incorporate that to gaming because I, I'm, I'm just a big productivity guy, but mm -hmm. at one point I might make a, a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Gaming. That'd be kind of fun. But Oh, I like uh, that. That would be kind of fun. Yeah. Um, and one of the topics in there, one of the seven habits of highly effective people is to begin with the end in mind. Uh, I kind of want to talk about that with the identify what matters most mm. because if you begin with the end in mind, well, you know that in order to get to that goal, there's a there's so much uncertainty that happens mm -hmm. from the point that you create a goal to the point when you accomplish that goal. You, there's no way that you're ever going to figure out what those steps are mm -hmm. until you decide what the end point is. I like that. So mm -hmm. prioritizing from that point is kind of simple if you begin with the end in mind. Absolutely. If you, okay, I identify my goal. Let's talk about like real life podcasts. I understand my goal is to make a podcast yeah right so that what matters most is 
making a script, getting it filmed, getting hosts, getting the studio. So I need to prioritize these yeah. things. I need to figure out what the distractions are. The distractions sometimes actually are just playing games and yeah. watching videos. Sometimes that's research, sometimes that's distraction. But I've, I'm like, okay, I, me playing this new game is not helping me make the script, mm -hmm. not getting me into the studio. So I, if I know what matters most. That goal, like you said, is making the podcast. I prioritize the steps to get to that, right? Mm -hmm. That's really important. And this is the point, we talked about consequences, right? And Mark says that the difference between games and real life is that the consequences are much larger. Yes, definitely. So he says that we this has the opposite effect on us, right? Okay. So since we know that our consequences are um, larger, we're less likely to try different things. Okay. Uh, because the, of the, going back to what I was saying about mm -hmm. you fail in a game, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. maybe even shorter, yeah. 30 seconds to retry. Real life, it's months. It's real, it's months or never yeah. again sometimes, but he says that we should learn this process in life even more so because the consequences are bigger. We should, mm. shouldn't be scared to try new things and prioritize and figure out what happens most because it's limited. We have these high yeah. consequences. We should have this mindset when we go into solving a real world problem because we know that we would want more success in real life, right? Oh, why wouldn't you? Why, why would wouldn't you we? want to spend more time to get less success? Mm -hmm. So you have to prioritize getting there. That's actually, uh, it might be a little bit too early to jump the gun into real life situations. Oh, go ahead. When I start anything, I kind of have this problem of paralysis by analysis mm. where I try to get into there and figure out 100% of what I'm supposed to do before mm -hmm. I even begin. Yeah. And prioritizing, there comes a point where you have to give enough time to figure out the end. You have to mm. figure out the time mm -hmm. to optimize. But at a certain point, you just reach a point where you're wasting time. Yep. You have to start doing what you've been planning and sure. actually create that podcast, oh, create absolutely. those show notes. Mm -hmm. I already know that it needs to be done. I just have to embark on it. Okay. Yeah. That's the most important thing is making yeah. the show notes. Just do it. Ex exactly. Well, there's a point. There's something that just stops you. Do it. Right. And maybe that's the consequences. Maybe that's analysis paralysis. <laughs> maybe there's so many things you want to do. But that's what this is about. Limit those distractions so you can reach those goals. Yeah. And I think I, I put speed running here. Okay. I think speed running really highlights these process because in speed running, you have to identify the quickest path. Yeah. You have to identify which glitches work, which ones don't. And you have to practice those over and over yeah. and over until you can do it right. And that's, mm. again, min. I think this is the example of min-maxing. I think speed running, speed yeah. running and then real life prioritizing is min-maxing. We can't do everything in yeah. a day. So let's put our effort into the things that helps us reach the goal. That's a good point because mm -hmm. it, you can't just speed run the first time you go through nope. it. You have to go through it maybe once, twice. You have to figure out, going back to what we were talking about down there, uh, the learning from your mm -hmm. losses. The speed run comes after you've started with the end in mind. Yep. You've learned from your mistakes and then you prioritize which platforms to jump on, mm -hmm. which grenades to throw to make you jump farther forward yeah. whatever which speed run you're to you, doing. whatever it is for that game yeah and we're not practicing the techniques that don't get us faster in the game yeah exactly right? why would you practice something that makes so doesn't we, get you closer to your goal why are we yeah. practicing things that don't get us further in life closer yeah. to our life goals yeah. you know and that actually leads us into this i think these really go in order into our next point so tell them what the next point is in this Okay, I got this. So um, <laughs> it's actually a very organized th uh, way of thinking. So once you prioritize, you have to be able to prioritize the next point, which is uh, use resource management. Mm -hmm. Because once you know where you're going to end, you identify what matters most. You can't prioritize without knowing how much you have. Mm -hmm. You have to know mm -hmm. where you're at and manage what you have <laughs> in order to be able to give enough to what matters at that moment. Um, yeah, I really yeah, and, and I think Mark did a wonderful job of this because he says that gamers are trained to recognize when things are management resources mm -hmm. issues and according act accordingly. Okay, so how 
how many quests are like go get 10 things go and get this much money right yeah. i think about wow you have like classic wow is such a feat to get a thousand gold for your first mount yes it was right so you're always for me it was always in the back of my mind i'm like okay i can't overspend because i yeah. want that mount. so i would the goal i i identified what mattered the most to me mm -hmm. was getting my mount at level 40 <laughs> Or 60 is the thousand goal. Yeah, that's well, the thousand. At 60. Yeah. Getting it right at 60, because that's a huge upgrade. I prioritized setting money away. Yeah. And that and I identified that gold was the resource. Because imagine mm -hmm. if you had waited until level 60 and you had been spending all the things frivolous, getting all your mm -hmm. armor that you don't need at level 24 yeah. and just like <laughs> fancy from dead yeah. mines. Like, it's just, not gonna go anywhere. You can get twink gear and just yeah. make myself really good, but I, why would I do that if I'm leveling? If you, if that character's goal is to stay a twink. You can get all the best gear, you can enchant it, but if your goal is to end up max level and then be the best, why would you spend all why that time I, on level yeah. 19? You wouldn't. You also, know. for you, the, those of you who are like, why did you just say twink? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's a little dated. <laughs> it's, it's a, yeah, it's a WoW term for WoW. At least in Classic WoW, there are these level brackets for PvP, so 10 to 19. Mm -hmm. 20 to 29 and a twink it ends on the ninth level every yeah i think it ends at the ninth level until max level yeah. so anyway a twink will make their character the highest level for their brackets so level 19 and get the absolute best gear possible so yeah. they can just be the best at pvp for that bracket so yeah, i just want to clear that up because you're probably like what thank you th thanks for that <laughs> what are you <laughs> talking <insane>. about <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah okay so resource management we uh, we're trained in games. We're talking about so many examples from WoW. It's like, okay, what resources do I need to accomplish the task? How much of that do I need? Mm -hmm. We know we need money, and we know we need a thousand gold. Would you consider experience a resource? Oh, absolutely. It's experience is a resource? Absolutely. Even though you can't really lose experience? You can't lose experience, but you control you can control how much you get it. Right? You can manage you okay. can manage it. Yeah. Right. You can say, I'm gonna go just kill moms, that's not gonna be as efficient as doing quests in okay. addition to it. Or Maybe it is if you're a frost mage and you can cheese. Yeah, you can just kill eighty at. You can one kill time. eighty at a time. Yeah. But again, you have to prioritize what works for your class and your situation. Okay. So for Mark says, with real life problems, we have to ask ourselves the same questions: What are the resources that matter to me? And oh, gotta flip that over. Which matter the least? What are distractions? And how much is enough? And how much is too much yeah. of these resources? So big, big resource is oh, time. Man. Time in real life. <laughs> the first time I got my Costco card, I definitely oh, bought way too much too stuff. Much the resource money. management was what, not good. What there. are the life resources? Time and money. <laughs> yeah. So we need to know how much time we have in the week to work towards this podcast. What time will I set aside to prioritize working on the show notes? Mm -hmm. What time will I set aside to, on research? And what time will I set aside on fun? Yeah. <laughs> right? It has to be a balance. It has to be a balance, right? Because yeah. it can also be too much. Mm -hmm. And I think you already brought it up, food. I put real life examples <laughs> yeah. here because we need to manage food. And I think we don't see food as a resource management issue, yeah. but it really is, right? It when, really is. when are we eating during the day? How much are we eating? Are we getting good calories, bad calories? Overeating, not eating. It's like enough. one of the most, like, prolific resources we yeah. have, <laughs> right? And we all do it pretty poorly. I just feel. like, like lack of days. We're all. Uh, some people manage it incredibly yes. well with their like. Uh, with intermittent fasting mm -hmm. diets that's a mm -hmm. way that they manage that that resource but man i have such a problem with eating it's yeah. either eat way too much like eat this entire mat worth of food mm -hmm. or just wait until six and realize wow i'm starving oh my god like, I <laughs> eat that today oh no yeah so i i really want to dead you're just dead mm -hmm. and i wanted to touch on this because we we if we think like gamers it's like eating kind of takes the fun out of it so yeah. you don't have I, again there can be too much of a good thing i shouldn't min max my food you don't have to min max it to the extreme but we still want to <laughs> know like are we overeating are we getting yeah. fruit and vegetables do i need to eat donuts every day yeah right and this isn't like this isn't life advice we're not going to shame you for those things but just <laughs> getting you thinking in that mindset right of maybe for you you identified the problem that maybe i'm eating too much so mm -hmm. then you can 
from there, you can start to identify the priority, the resources, which would be the And it doesn't even have. need to be a priority. Doesn't if I manage my resources fine, mm -hmm. it allows me to spend elsewhere mm -hmm. managing different resources a different way. Mm -hmm. My emotions, if I don't, th and it, it's everybody's choice. It's we can do whatever yep. we want, and it goes back to beginning with the end in mind. If we're trying to lose weight, we're never going to stuff our face mm -hmm. so we can think about a problem differently. But if I'm a skinny guy and for whatever reason I can, re I have a really high metabolism, I can eat like crazy, and I know I'm not going to gain weight, but I'm also anxious. What if eating helps me? Because mm -hmm. that's my resource management. Sure. Whatever helps us cope is, and get to the end goal in mind. Mm -hmm. It's managing the resources that get. And that's goal. yeah that's really important to to touch on because everyone back to what we said identify what matters most to you for me food management is eating more because mm -hmm. i'm one of those people that has that high metabolism where if i don't eat enough before bed it'll wake me up yeah because i'm hungry yeah your stomach will punch you it'll just punch me <laughs> <laughs> so everyone's gonna have those different ones but i i just wanted to put this into the terms like that literally everyone does yeah food it, it is a it literally a resource yeah. that propels us. And it's funny because we very easily could have put money. We could have put time. Everybody knows that time mm. is the most valuable resource. We can't get more of that. And they're all interlinked. Too. They, they really, mm -hmm. realistically are. We, mm -hmm. get, we have time to get money to buy food. It's, it all comes back to food. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Dude, everything comes back to food. Dude, it does. All of our events, the social events, everything, dating is around food. Even, even watching a movie, all entertainment is surrounded about food. If you're at a game, there oh. might be a meat platter there. It oh, might have some snacks you know, to go there. And everything that we're doing ideas. is a medium to hang out. And food is one of the most popular mediums and easiest ones to relate because we all have it. We all manage it. Yeah, it, I like that a lot. And the idea you're giving me is like, what if we do an episode about food-based games? Dude, that'd be a good one. Well, would that be sweet? They probably had some pretty wild food-based games out there. I know. There's like overcooked <laughs> Have you played that one? No, yeah, <laughs> we all work together in this kitchen and try to build food okay. items. It's, it's really funny. Mm. I have it. We should try it sometime. But yeah, mm. uh, food is a resource. And if we think about it, we can, might have better handle. In the, if we think about it in those terms, we might have better handle over so it. So like budgeting your food. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that you should budget money. Mm -hmm. We budget food. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And again, we don't have to go to extremes like bodybuilders. <laughs> yeah. And we've, okay, so this next point, I'm gonna move on here because I think this next point is really relevant and we've touched on it a lot throughout. We've alluded to it, but the value of things can change. Ooh. Right, so this means that gamers, we look at the resources as tools and that's something we need to get to the coal, but we know and we accept the fact that the key to getting where we need is to le sometimes letting go of the things that got us there, hmm. right? And so think about gear. There's so many games that use gear. Think about Diablo and WoW and yeah. these types of games where you're constantly getting new gear and you just like throw it away, vendor yeah. trash it. And we know that it's like we can't keep it forever. Shadow Fang, sh yeah, Shadow Fang from Shadow mm -hmm. Fang Keep. It was the most expensive level 19 weapon you can mm -hm't. get and paid hundreds. Would have would have bought you that, that flying mount for a thousand gold at some point. Yep. But uh, give that to somebody that's level 30 that has something that's 10 times as good. Maybe not 10 times as good, but something that's way better. Yeah. It's not going to see any values. Like, uh, I could use that on mm -hmm. another character. I don't care. The yeah. value changes over time. Yeah. Right? And the value changes over time and changes in different settings. Yeah. Right? So that sword is so good. It's so much money because it's good for these level 19 twink characters, yeah. these min-maxers. But at level 30, who cares? Yeah. Why would you spend that much on it? It's probably still good because still of good. how good of the weapon is. But level 40. We'll go up the bracket. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Look at the whirlwind axe. <laughs> uh, so Mark says that we know thing, the value of game, things change in games, so why don't we do this in real life, right? In life, we have to be willing to reevaluate what matters to us, hmm. right? So constantly, he argues that emotional inventory to understand the value of things in life now, rather than how they were valuable to us before, is really hmm. important. That's kind of hard, though, because sentimentality is like one of the dif most difficult things for me to get rid of stuff. It's hard. Like, I have so many clothes that I'll never mm -hmm. wear. My kids will never wear that. I know. I can't get rid of it. It's hard. I, I 
just threw away some shirts that I've had. Probably for hurt a your heart. I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm like, dude, whatever. Yeah. They're gone. Yeah. Taking up space. And so, real life example, stuff. <laughs> and this, yeah. this is very hard for people. This is where hoarding comes from. Yeah. And it, there, we're going to have another one, I think, where we talk about other people. But mm. one of the things about value changing in life is the people that we... People are there. I've heard at one point, I don't remember who said it, but everybody in your life is there for a season, reason, or a lifetime. Mm. So if they're there for a reason, that value might be able to help you in that moment. But if that was somebody else in that same situation, the value that 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 person brought you, it's not the same reason. You're in a different season of your life. And if they don't stick around for that reason, Mm. it's not because of that person it might just be because you weren't ready for that because the value yeah. that the things that are important to you it's not the same thing that's important to your friends or mm-hmm. your friends that you used to have absolutely and, and we can find value in other things because we still appreciate the person as they are yeah. we don't necessarily see eye to eye on maybe a politics the games we play maybe they like sports games now and i'm never going to play games with them ever again i don't know about that but. who did that uh, yeah <laughs> who taught them that who, who hurt you yeah <laughs> <laughs> but either way, what they found important in life has changed, and we have to be able to understand that what we find important, just like them, it also changes. So we have to be able to understand and appreciate that going yes. into that. Yes, we're always changing. Our values changing, their values changing, so we're always doing this self-reflection. Mm-hmm. And Mark argues that we should do this emotional inventory more, because so- sometimes you just hold on to stuff that's weighing you down or hurting you, right? And this can happen in relationships. This can happen with stuff. Yeah. So, but we're, we're getting close to the bottom of the hour. We got, I think we got three, oh, three more points here to go. And I, 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 want time, I want time to ask you the outro question. It's a good one. So take us on to this next point. All right, I'll be quick with this one. This one I'm a numbers guy. I loved math growing right. up in second grade, uh, Mrs. Saladay. Oh, man, I, I, was, I was getting that. Banana, banana split. I want it. You did. Um, <laughs> I remember that. That's hilarious. Um, but the math, you have to trust the math in the gaming. Whenever you come across a situation where you understand that it's going to be difficult, but it is possible, even if it's a 1%, I have to give it on uh, one out of 100 of those chances I give it, it's going to matter. And that kind of goes back to something called the law of large numbers. If you don't know what the law of large numbers is, it's a statistic and probability, or it's a concept and probability where if you have a, a, a proven average, the higher that number gets, the more tries you give to that, that object or whatever attempt you're doing, the closer it's going to be to that proven average. Mm-hmm. So if we have a coin, it's a 50-50 chance to get heads or tails. Mm-hmm. Whenever we flip that coin, well, we might get seven heads, but we might get three tails. Yep. We flip it a thousand times, it's going to be pretty close to 500 and 500. Yep. So, Whenever you know what the average is, it kind of goes back to begin with the end in mind because Mm -hmm. if you don't know what you're going for, you don't know how to calculate the Mm -hmm. math. Mm -hmm. So the math is, it's absolute in gaming. They're programmed. They have to abide by those numbers. So many games just tell you the percent. Like, what's the proc chance of this happening? What's the chance of hitting? D&D does this a lot, too. If you can literally take your D20 and turn it into percentages. Times it by five, I guess, right? Like, right yeah, huh? Exactly, right? Huh. So you, like, I know if I have 18 AC, uh, I have 10% chance to hit, yeah. right? With no modifiers, so you can turn it into math. I like that a lot. I'm going to think about that more in my D&D, because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I can totally hit this mm-hmm. guy. I got a 5% chance. Yeah, like, <laughs> do, do, do that math. We're always doing that in games, right? We're like, okay. Does this proc chance, is it high enough for me to rely on this skill to yeah. get me through this task? Yeah. And I actually, I, but I put two things for real life examples, but first I should say that Mark says that when it involves math, we should trust it. Right? Okay. When the numbers are there, trust the numbers. But real life problems don't always involve math. So sometimes mm-hmm. we gotta trust our gut and, and our emotional mm-hmm. responses, and, and we gotta know when it boils down to math, when it boils down to emotion. So the two examples I gave for that are gambling. Okay. The math is there. <laughs> we know we're not gonna win the lottery, probably. <laughs> there's a very, very, very low chance. So there's a lot of people like me, I'm like, I'm not even gonna try, because mm-hmm. I trust that math. But yeah. then on the other side, you have relationships. It's, it, uh, you can't boil people down to math. 
yeah. right? It's up to you to evaluate, do this emotional inventory, and evaluate using your gut and your, your what's important to you to make choices in your relationships. Mm-hmm. Which, we've been talking about these last two points throughout, because what does this boil down to? This boils down to people, mm-hmm. right? If it's not about people, like, us or others like what's the point of this right Mm -hmm. so the next one he says is find the value in others okay right so gamers learn quickly when games have a political component always we're done yeah send it throw that sheet off we recognize that when there's a political component that the value of others right we need to recognize that each player has a value and you have to learn what that value is yeah. Right. So the fastest way to lose is not respecting someone else in a game you're playing yeah. with. That's definitely true. I remember mm-hmm. some, uh, most of the games, uh, Here to Slay is around here somewhere, mm-hmm. but it's a game where there's, it's a free-for-all essentially. Mm-hmm. And if you come in there and you think that you're going to win, if you try to win first and you don't have that win, you're not going to win. You're not. And the same thing is if, if you try to help somebody else win, um, they'll probably help you. So, um, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, you you give someone that help, they're more likely to help you, yeah. right? So understand that value that they have. It's like, they haven't done anything all game. Maybe I can talk to them and get some help from them. Mm-hmm. They're holding, like, 20 cards. Maybe I should talk to them. Yeah. I know their value is higher than someone that has the three cards, yeah. right? And it's, it doesn't boil that down that simply for people. But when we look at it in real life, if we can say that everyone we meet has value, and you've yeah. talked about this, the perspectives that you have when you meet people, mm-hmm. you're ready to learn about their cultures and what they have to give you and their life experiences. Yeah. So it's really important we don't dismiss people. We understand the value they have to give. Absolutely, and a good real world example is that when I was in the Marine Corps, everybody has a completely different background mm-hmm. to get to that point. Mm-hmm. So once they've gotten to that point, Everybody is in the same exact spot. Mm -hmm. Some people know digital editing. Some people are amazing cooks, and they can end up as a combat cook. You have no idea what they can end up with, Mm -hmm. but we all bring something different to the table, and the best teams that you have are the people that take the the team leaders that take enough time to ask, hey, Victor, what Mm -hmm. are you good at? I'm good at at writing show notes. Hey, see? (laughs) And... What do we know here? We're having a, a, an amazing podcast around that same thing. Mm-hmm. And whenever we can find whatever that person finds them va- the value for themselves, you know that you've hit a vein because Ooh. they find that that's important to them. They're mm-hmm. going to actually care about that. Topic, oh, yeah. So. Absolutely. And that honestly just ties right into our last point. So we find the value. We understand they have value. It's important to I'll let you take it away. Let people do you favors. Mm-hmm. It's really important to not be, like, don't be scared to let people help you. Yeah. Everyone has. And that's a tough one for some people, though, Mm -hmm. because we're always wanting to be Mm self-reliant. We always want to be able to imagine that everybody's dream is to be self-employed where they don't have a boss or anything like Mm -hmm. that. But at the same time, we have to rely on other people. If we want to get anything that matters in life, it it comes with relying on somebody Mm. else because we, you said something earlier um, where you realize at a certain point, well, you could do every role in a project. Mm. It's not effective. It's not efficient. There's people that are probably better at certain aspects of that and probably enjoy it way better than you do. Exactly. So why do we not just let people do that favor that they enjoy doing? Right. You know? Absolutely. And Mark says like, humans enjoy doing favors yeah right so it makes them feel good gives them this sense of purpose and there's this expect expectation underneath that they'll get paid back which yeah. in turn makes them want to stay around you longer uh, so you can do them a favor and it creates these bonds and these Think relationships about it with, wow how many times have you tried to help somebody out and how many times have you been helped out it might not mm-hmm. it probably wasn't the same person that helped you out but it's like a kind of it's like well known in the wow community if you help somebody that's struggling like it's just what they'll pay it to. back down the line right there's been many times we were talking about this pre-show like there's been many times where we're just grinding and some guy gets off his mount horde or alliance doesn't even matter doesn't even point, matter right? they they shoot the thing one shot it for us and help <laughs> us out and keep moving or i've had people 
literally, I'm a lion, so low level lion's character, max level horde, and they're just killing the things for me. Yeah. I'm like, that's so, that's so, and you can't even talk to them. Yeah, they, if you type, it doesn't, they can't. It's a different language is, because of the like, different races in the game, but they're just yeah. being nice. And because of that, because I've had that kindness to me, I've done favors for other people. Yep, exactly. And we get this because in political games, these free for all style games, we don't work with other people. Yeah. You don't make bonds, it's harder to win. Mm -hmm. And think about those easy wins. It's because, well, you didn't want that person to win. You were, you were okay if your friend won. Yeah. Because they helped you out earlier. You, you weren't salty that they won, or mm -hmm. you, you weren't salty that you lost. You were kind of happy that the person you helped win, exactly. you are happy that they won. Like, yeah. okay, well, you won. I'm okay with it. Yeah. I helped you. And it's like in Magic too. Like we play Commander, that's free for all. Mm -hmm. You, it's so hard to win if everyone gets against you. Yeah. If everyone teams up on you. If you're not if, making if these the, deals. If the whole table says you're not winning, you're not. You're gonna winning. die. You're gonna die on that turn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I think the best real life example is just relationships. Yeah. Right. The whole point of this is to build relationships with others. Right. To do favors for others. To let people help you, so you can create bonds, make people happy, mm -hmm. make friends, right? Yeah, I try to go into most situations with the mindset of what's in it for them. Mm -hmm. I know that mm -hmm. I could do what, no, nobody really wants me to help them out, but if I can come ask them and say, what? how can I help you mm -hmm. out? Well, it, since we're always trying to be independent, there might be that weakness where they come in and actually take my favor. But if you start with that, what, what's in it for them? Eventually you'll find that person that you help them out and you guys can, you just click. You, yep. you hit it off and you guys are like mm -hmm. the best friends because oh, yeah. they saw what you were trying to go for and there was some mutual connection of mm -hmm. something that you guys enjoyed. And that, what is in it from them, comes straight for games. Okay, what are they getting out of this? Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a gamer mindset, but we can turn that into a positive, right? Yeah. Okay, so that was the 10 points. Okay. We're at the bottom of the hour, so let's just do a recap and I got a question for you before we go. Okay, okay so recap here. There's a solution. Try something else. Okay. Losing is an opportunity to learn. Identify what matters most. Prioritize. Use resource management. The value of things can change. Trust the math. Find value in others. And let people do you favors. Hmm. So these were the 10 points. And the question that I have after this recap for you, which one of these points do you think you've most improved on in your life? Oh, most improved on. I'd mm -hmm. say I, I hope I have improvement in all of those areas, mm -hmm. but where I'd say I'm most improved is, well, I haven't got to where I want to be yet. Mm -hmm. I, I've become increasingly good at figuring out what matters most to me. Sure. Um, like I mentioned earlier, when I started this, I, I had to take a step back from gaming. Yeah. I'll never stop gaming. Sure. That's just like a part of That's who, who we I are. Like yeah. it, <laughs> even if it takes a different form in the mm -hmm. future, who knows what it's going to look like yeah. in 50 years. Who, what the, what the heck? <laughs> but no matter what, I always try to identify what matters most. Mm. And at a certain point, I guarantee it's going to go back to being video games. Sure. At a certain point, like you, that's how we get enjoyment out of life. So you're going to go back to that. Mm. I really like that point. I'd, I'd say that's really high up there for me yeah. as well. It's like, because sometimes you just do things or you play games. And we've said on the show, if you're playing a game and you don't like it, just stop. Yeah. Right. But there's so many games I've tried to just push through because friends like it. I got to play it. Yeah. So I'm, that's pretty high up there for me. But I think the one that I really has been best at is just finding the value in others. Okay. Right. It's just like, okay, instead of being cynical it's like okay what what value can you bring to this situation yeah and just really like trying to work with people instead of saying get out of here like okay how can we work together to find the best fit for you yeah i mean look mm -hmm. at it you have an entire production crew going on oh, you yeah. want to be able to do this i can't we're, do it we're myself we're asking if like mm -hmm. i asked you if you want to do this yourself you're like never it's absolutely so much not like i tried it's amazing. a lot of effort like, right yeah. yeah so that wraps it up it's a good show. This hey, was a fun too. one. We got the soapbox a little, but I think yeah. there's a lot of good points that gamers can take from it. So I thank you, Mark, for this topic. Yeah, it probably wasn't as gamey as normal. It probably wasn't. It was, it was, <laughs> I think it was a lot more life advice here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how qualified we are for that, but we're at the bottom of the hour and we've got to wrap up. Yeah. So 
I hope you all learned something. If you did, if, or if you have some questions, please contact us at sharediscoveryshow at gmail.com. Thank you, BCTV, for letting us put on this production. Always, always a treat. And if, as we go, as we sign off episode 23, I want to say, play some games, be kind to each other, have some fun, and I'm going to send it to Brad to sign us off. Hey, and just remember, there's always another step. Appreciate the journey. Thanks for joining us.